What's up guys, this is Valentino with Bigger Creations and today I'm gonna to share with you five things that I wish I knew when I first started producing. So the other day I was sitting at my computer and I was just thinking about how seamless things have become. I remember when I first started producing music, everything felt like I was trying to discover how to do things. And I remember feeling so much frustration behind not being able to get what I had in my head that I was listening to, the idea that I had, and translating that into the software and into the tools that I had. And, you know, it just kind of made me start thinking, you know, there are so many things that I wish I would have known when I first started producing. And a lot of them are super fundamental and super easy too. So I figured I'm not the only one that has gone through this. And I figured I would share my perspective on the top five things that I wish I knew when I first started producing music. I know for a fact, if I would have known these five things, I would have progressed in my craft a lot more quickly. I think every single producer, no matter what point in your producing experience you're at, can relate to the things I'm going to talk about today. And I wanted to share these tips because I feel like they're very different than what everyone else talks about. So here we go. Tip number one, stock sounds aren't a limitation. It took me a really long time to figure this out. At first, I started using stock sounds just because I didn't have money to purchase additional sounds or VSTs and I was just kind of figuring things out. And at first I just felt like no matter what I was creating, it just sounded cheesy. It didn't sound like it was something that I could hear on the radio. And that was very frustrating for me. And creatively as an artist, it just really held me back. It wasn't until I started actually seeing the value in the stock sounds that come inside of Logic and actually tweaking them and spending more time on catering the sound to how I wanted it to be with those stock sounds that I started producing better. When I started doing these production videos on YouTube and started getting more attention, it was because I was actually spending more time on my sound selection and not necessarily shopping around for different VSTs and sounds and samples, just leveraging what I had. So I can't stress enough, Stock sounds are super powerful, especially inside of Logic Pro. I've made songs that I feel can be on the radio and I've only used stock sounds. Check them out on my channel and you'll know what I'm talking about. But yeah, tip number one, stock sounds are not a limitation. They're only a limitation if you let them be. Tip number two, release music. I got to a point where I had produced over 200 songs and hadn't released a single one of them. Yeah, I'm not exaggerating. And I feel like every time I release music, it's actually a catalyst to help me move on. When I have music that I feel could be released that maybe just needs some finishing touches or actually is finished, but I just haven't done anything with the project, I feel like that holds me back creatively when I go to work on new things. It's almost like when you try to go to a party and you still have homework and you know you have a test tomorrow. So it's like somewhere in the back of your mind, it's somewhat prohibiting you from having a good time because you're thinking about it. Maybe that analogy works if you were a good student, but I feel like when I release music, it kind of clears that off of my plate creatively and it gives me more creative mental space to move forward and make new things. And releasing music will help you release more music and create more music. So release your music, even if you feel like it's not ready, because you know what? If it's not ready right now, then whatever you're gonna be making next is gonna be better, and that's gonna be more ready than where you're at right now. There's always gonna be that moment when you listen back to old uh, releases and you just cringe and you're kind of embarrassed, but at the same time, you're kind of like, there's some sense of pride in that. And I think it's important to have those milestones in your career. So release music and release music often, especially when you feel like your library of things that you've worked on continues to grow, but you're in a creative block. That's probably why.
little trick, if you want to make something sound a little bit wider without actually widening, widening the sound, um, you can actually just add a sample delay and just move one, either the left or the right, a little bit off. And basically that just delays the sample a little bit on one side and then the other. And um, just be very subtle with it, but it actually gives you more of this stereo feel. So. three, don't be afraid of collaboration. This was huge for me. When I first started producing, I felt very much like still more of a songwriter and songwriting and producing felt very, very personal to me. And it still is, but to the point that I felt like I couldn't share that with other people. Like I had to, everything had to be perfect. I had to be completely happy with the music before I even showed it to anyone, like even family, which you know, they're gonna be your fans no matter what, but I was like still like, no, it's gotta be ready, it's gotta be perfect. I can't have like these cringe moments. It wasn't until I actually started collaborating that I found how liberating it is. There's nothing more exciting than being in the studio or being anywhere with someone else and having that chemistry of like, oh my gosh, this is an awesome idea, or oh my gosh, this is coming out so great. And I feel like part of that comes with some confidence in your craft, um, but at the same time, it comes with some humility, understanding that you don't know everything and that everything you do is not great, but it can be better with someone else's contributions. Don't be afraid of collaboration. Whether there's a big gap between your talent and skill level and the person you're collaborating with, whether you're on the bottom or on the top of that scale, it doesn't matter, collaborate. And I promise you that it will help you grow as an artist and a producer, and it will help you see things in a completely different way and sometimes you learn things from other people's processes. And I think that's the funnest part about collaboration. So don't be afraid of collaboration. It will actually help you progress. To this day, actually, a lot of my favorite releases have been collaborations. So there you have it. <laughs> Tip number four. I think you guys are gonna relate with this one a lot. So if you're anything like me, you probably have a hard drive full of a bunch of Logic Pro or whatever DAW you use projects that have not been finished. After like psychoanalyzing myself a little bit, I've come to the conclusion that the reason why we don't finish things is because we think they're good and we think if we keep moving forward, we might ruin it. And I think sometimes we kind of feel like, okay, we've got to a point where it sounds really cool. I feel the potential in it, but if I move forward, like I feel like I'm gonna run out of the creativity and it's gonna ruin the whole project. You're never going to run out of creativity. And if you push through those projects and you actually go through and finish them, even if you have zero intentions of releasing them or putting an artist on them or showing it to anyone, but just finishing the project is going to make a huge difference. It's gonna teach you some problem solving where it's like, okay, where am I hitting this roadblock? And what can I do to combat it? And how do I push through to actually finish this project? A lot of times actually end up being something that you feel you didn't ruin. It, it'll actually be something great and something you're super proud of. So my tip to you is move on, finish, finish what you've started and move on. You're gonna be a better artist, a better producer, a better everything if you actually complete your projects and then move on. Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of courses to choose from. Now, you've heard me talk about these in my videos before, and that's because I actually believe Skillshare is an awesome tool. If you're trying to learn something new, Skillshare is the best place to learn how to do it. It's super affordable at less than $10 a month, and honestly, it has so many options. Whatever creative thing that you're trying to learn, 
chances are there's a course about it on Skillshare. So I've been singing since I was like in the womb, practically. And um, I've never had formal training. And I've always wanted to kind of grow in that craft and learn how to control my voice a little bit better so that my productions and my songs could be better. Lately, I've been taking this course by Deanna Kangas. She's a performer and vocal coach. I've been taking this course and it's been super fun to kind of understand what kind of things I need to do to better control my voice and what things I can do on a daily basis to work that muscle out and really improve. I love using Skillshare and I love learning new things. For a limited time, if you use the link in the description, then you'll get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. Tip number five. This is something I've talked about on my channel before. Gear is about generating inspiration and creativity, not about upping your production. And what I mean by that is you could buy an endless amount of gear, MIDI controllers, plugins, studio monitors, a new computer, all these sorts of things. You could get everything. You could have every single Waves plugin, everything, and still make crappy music. When I first started producing, I was like, yeah, I gotta get my studio monitors, I gotta get a MIDI controller, it's gotta look cool, it's gotta have drum pads, it's gotta have the knobs, it's gotta have lights, everything's gotta look legit, you know? Um, and honestly, that did not make me a better producer. It's actually more about what kind of inspiration and creativity does the tool that you're purchasing foster for you. If you've been watching me from the beginning, I've actually simplified my setup. I initially started with this M Audio 61 key station, and then I found that, yeah, it's nice if I wanna play like a full, like two-handed piano piece or whatever, but it was getting in the way because there were so many options for me to just like start messing around on the keyboard. And then I went to my MPK Mini 2. It had a couple of drum pads. It's a small keyboard and it just let me kind of input what I needed to and that was it. I could move on to the next instrument or to the next project in my actual song. And I feel like that's when I started being a little bit more productive as a producer. I don't know, it just kind of eliminated some distractions. Though the tools that you use, the gear that you buy, is all about does it generate that inspiration and allow you to be in the workspace that you need to be in in order to reach that potential creativity that you're looking for. For me, this is all I really need. I found that I don't need a drum pad. Um, and I remember like for years as a producer, I was like, no, I need a MIDI controller that has drum pads because you know, then my drums are gonna get hit harder and it's gonna feel cooler when I'm producing. That's BS, it doesn't make a difference for me. For some people it does. For some people you do need that tactile, you know, sensitivity to just have a drum pad and that helps you get it out of your way. For me, it didn't enable me to be more creative. It was just a cool tool. The gear, the stuff that you purchase, it's not supposed to make you a better producer. It's just supposed to foster creativity. Gravitate to the things that actually generate inspiration for you and those are the things that you should have in your studio. When I text you, baby, you never reply. Didn't love me when I love you so bye bye. When I was with you, baby, all I did was cry. You didn't love me when I love you so bye bye. I'd rather be loved by a real man. Play the role, but boy, you gotta know, honey, you don't, you don't fit the shoes You made your choice, now you don't get to choose I refuse, and I'd have to be up out my mind to stay with you When I text you, baby, you never reply Didn't love me when I love you, so bye-bye When I was with you, baby, all I did was cry Didn't love me when I love you, so bye-bye there you have it guys that is all for today those are the five things that i wish i knew when i first started producing and hopefully they were helpful for you i tried to kind of share things that i feel other producers don't really talk about usually they talk about more technical things i hope they were helpful if you like this video make sure you hit that thumbs up make sure you're subscribed if you want to see more videos like this and we are literally this close to 50,000 subscribers. Thank you so much for your support. And I'm super excited to celebrate with you once we hit that 50K mark. So make sure you're subscribed. There's a lot of big things coming on this channel. As always, if you ever have any questions or wanna see more content, check me out on Instagram. Keep making beats.